Hi, my name is Miss Kelly, and I am the New Kids Ministry Director for First Press. I'm so excited to teach you guys and to be with you on Sundays. Did you know that Sunday school is starting back up on September 13th? I can hardly wait. But for now, I'm in my house and I have my sweet dog with me. If I could turn her around, this is Finley. And um, we have two dogs, but I have this one right here. And she is very obedient for the most part. And um, man, she's just excellent. I just wanted to show her to you because she might have a little bit to do with my lesson. So I'm gonna give her her bone and then I'm gonna show you a story about Joe. You ready? Okay. So that was Finley. Well, Finley is something that I love. Our whole family loves her. And so I was thinking about like all of the things that we have in our houses that we love. Um, we like music a lot, so I have a guitar here. I just have this little house right here because um, we spend a lot of time in our house and I feel very fortunate to have a house to, to spend time in. And so my kids love baseball. We spend a lot of time doing that. Um, and this right here is just a friend made this for me, um, Miss Lily. And so I love friends. I love, uh, I know we all do. I love having our friends. And this is a picture of our family, if you can see. This is me, and this is Mr. Marcus, and that's Easton, and that's Camden. And they're a little bit older now, but that was um, a few years back. So, I wanted to show you my house, and my friends, and my family, because it's kind of like Job. Job had really great family, a huge family, and um, he had a lot of things, but some things happened to Job. And um, the thing you need to know about him is that he was a man that was blameless and upright, and he feared God and he shunned evil. Now, God called him my servant Job. So he feared God in a way that was in loving awe. He knew God was almighty, all-knowing, and he knew God worked everything out for good. Job had put this in his heart, and God knew how good Job's heart was, and God knew that Job shunned evil. So I want you to read with me Job chapter 1. If you have your Bibles, I'll read it out loud. I'll try to read through it, and then we'll kind of talk about it. Job's character and wealth. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. There it is. There were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 female donkeys, and very many servants, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. His sons used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one of his day, and they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the days of the feast had run their course, Job would send and consecrate them, and he would rise early in the morning. I think that's important to know that he rise, always rose early in the morning, and he offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. So Job did this continuously. He offered burnt offerings to God for his family. He loved God. He fearingly loved God so much. He did this every morning for his family. Satan was allowed to test Job. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, from where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, hmm, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil? And Satan answered the Lord and said, 
Job, does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the works of his hands and all of his possessions have increased in the land. So Satan's kind of like, you protect Job, you give him all these things. Why would he? Anyways, why would he not? He says, does Job fear God for no reason? That Satan you know, another name for him is the devil. He's a, he's a hateful enemy. Um, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And God knows that. And so God also knew Job's heart. And God said he knew Job could handle this. And he knew Job would remain faithful to him even in his suffering. It's pretty amazing. So here's what the enemy says. But stretch out your hand and touch all that he has in it. Satan tells God, then Job will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your hands, Satan. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now, Satan takes Job's property and his children. And I want you to hear that. Satan takes it away, not God. Satan is the one that lets that, that makes the, those bad things happen to him. Let me read it to you. Now, there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And there came a messenger to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of your sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet still speaking, while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The Chaldeans formed three groups and made a raid on the camels and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Oh man, it sounds like the, the, that Satan put all of these fighters, all these battles and took all of his sheep. It'd be like taking um, all of my things, all of our things, took all of his friends, all of his servants, all of his people, all of the things that he loves. He's taking it all away. I'm going to keep reading. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young people and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Job just lost his house. Everything he loves, he lost his family enemy took it away from him. Here's what Job does. Then Job arose and he tore his robe. He was so sad and he shaved his head and he fell on the ground and he worshiped. It's so important to know he worshiped. Here's what he said. Naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He worships God. I, I, I want to have the faith of Job when bad things happen. In all of this, Job did not sin or charge God, God with wrong. He didn't blame it on God. He knew God was faithful. He knew God loved him. So I want to pray something for us. We pray with me. Lord God, I pray that we will be like Job, that we will be blameless and upright, and that we will fear you reverently, Lord, and that we will shun evil. Amen. Now, if I was to keep reading, I would tell you about, I would read through chapter two and and, and Satan kind of goes up to God again and says, 
um, well, I can read it to you, but it's kind of long, but it's very interesting. It says, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, from where have you come? And here Satan says it again. Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, he's looking, he knows, he's looking to kill, steal, and destroy. And he says, have you considered Job? Because God knows Job's heart. And God knows that Job is going to be faithful to God even in his suffering. He says that there is none like him on earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. Still, he holds fast his integrity, although you incite me against him to destroy him without reason. And you know what Satan says? Satan answers the Lord and says, skin for skin, all that a man has, he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand and touch his bones and his flesh and he will curse you to your face. That Satan is such a bully. He is the hateful enemy and he's wanting God to curse Job, but God doesn't. God says, no, I'm not going to touch his skin. He says, the Lord said to Satan, behold, he is in your hands. Only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and he struck Job with loathsome sores from the soles of his feet, of his foot to the crown of his head. And he took a piece of broken pottery with which to scrape himself while he sat in the ashes. And you know what? Job's wife even started going against Job. It says his wife said to him, do you still hold, fa hold fast to your integrity? His wife told him to curse God and die. But Job said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women who would speak. Shall we receive good from God and shall we not receive evil? We live on earth. Who roams around on the earth? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. So I want you to just know this, the heart of Job. Job is a man that was blameless and upright, and he feared God. And what I love about Job is when the hard things happen, he worshiped God. He knew God was all-knowing. He knew God was all-loving. And he knew God would work all things out for his good. So sometimes um, when things happen in our lives, we, we don't always see God's hand because we can't. Sometimes we just don't see it in our natural world. Sometimes we often don't understand what he is doing, right? And there will be times in life that don't really make sense to us. And sometimes we wish things could be different. And sometimes we will have movements of feeling unprepared with what is coming our way. But I want you to look up. And remember, remember what Job did. He looked up. And remember that above it all, there is a throne. And on it sits a God of unimaginable majesty. He's ruling for all of his glory. And he's ruling for your good. We just don't quite understand it yet, right? So I have a scripture for you that I want you to know. I have a picture of Job. I found this little picture, and he's just praying for God. Um, but I have this scripture, and I was looking for my little eagle. This is an eagle toy that I have. And the scripture is very helpful for me because when things start to get hard, I think of this. And I'm going to say it with you. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And so when our hope is in God, like Job's, we will have everything we need to handle the day, the situation. Um, I'm going to say it one more time. Say it with me this time. I'll say it. You repeat it with me. But those who hope in the Lord, I'm sorry, but those who hope in the Lord, you say it, but those who hope in the Lord 
will renew their strength. You say it, will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. God knows that if our hope is in him, he's got us and he works all things out for his good and for our good. I need you to know that. So I'm gonna pray for us. And, and I also wanna tell you that at the end, like Job still continues to talk to God, to pray to God, and to worship God through all the pain and suffering. He is such a faithful servant of God. And um, I just want you to know at the very end, like God actually gives back. He has like even more family and he gets even more oxen, a bigger house. He gets back more because he's so faithful and trustworthy to God. He's so loyal to God's love and he knows in his heart that God loves him, that God is all seeing, all good, and he knows in his heart that he loves God. So he actually gets it all back in the end of Job. It's very interesting. So let me pray for us, you guys. God, you are sovereign and trustworthy. Your plans are perfect, Lord, and we know that. We must trust you even when we do not understand why things are happening. God, will you continue our hope in you, Lord? And will you renew our strength when hard things come our way? Your word says, Lord, that when we hope and trust in you, we will soar on wings like eagles. We will run and not grow weary. We will walk and not be faint. Praise you, God, for your loving kindness is everlasting. Amen. So, my friends, my video is a little bit long. Um, I met Miss Lily and Miss Lexi at church uh, last Sunday, and I'm so excited to do Sunday school with you that I think I'm going to ask them if I can do Sunday school with them in their house or have them come to my house for the next time. So be looking for that because um, their mama told me that they have a really amazing story to share with you and um, just how God is so good to us, even through hard times. I hope y'all have a good week. See y'all later.